This is D Brown, the begotten son, and you have just entered the begotten experience. <gasps> niggas two guns up we drop niggas i was like <laughs> all right yo only styles can get away with like a hook like that's just that right. gangster you like yo i love that I, and it's funny because with the hooks it's like you gotta you have the hooks that's just catchy mm -hmm. but then you have those type of hooks but with those hooks though you it's either going to be done correctly Mm -hmm. And you just going to be like, like you said, I love this, or it'd be just a hook is way too wordy. What are you doing? Yeah. You know? So I got, I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, style, styles is, I, I think, Styles is probably like one of my favorite rappers. Like every time somebody asks me well, who's my favorite rapper, mm -hmm. he's the guy I go to. Um, and it's because like he's not really like wordy. Right. You know what I mean? He's not rhyming astropologists with whatever else he's not doing right, that right he's not rhyming like 30 syllables mm -hmm. with another 30 syllables but what i like the reason i like him so much is because he's to the punch you know what i mean where uh eminem would say something like um i walk around past the dog house and where the frog bounce and come straight to your house and <laughs> punch you right in your mouth styles mm -hmm. be like knock knock open up fist to the face like <laughs> yeah. You don't know what the house looks like. Right. You know what I mean? And I just right. love the fact that, like, he doesn't change that. You right. know what I mean? Right. And it's a dopeness about that to just be like, all right, I understand that you're saying all of that. But I didn't even notice the doghouse. Right. Or a frog bounce. <laughs> I just knocked on the door. You open. And I put fist to your face. Like, that was it. <laughs> I came here for one reason and one reason only, to punch you in your face. And that was that. And that was that. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's like, um, but then also, but also, you got to remember, uh, uh, Raekwon, though. Like, yeah. He was straight. <laughs> yeah. He was straight give a whole, like, dissection of everything that's going on in the scene. Yep. And all that. And you just be f sitting there like, yo, like, I know Shorty look cute. But dad, you telling me about the type of shoes she got on, yeah. the nail polish she got on, and yep. the the perfume that she wearing, and titties on glaze, like yeah. God dang, you know. <laughs> hey man, hey man, ghosts used to kill. They, I ghosts. mean, what they still do? They kill yeah. them stories, man. They, yeah. Gun smoke in the air, car exhaust backfired, and then I looked and saw that tire roll down. <laughs> but I seen Shorty. How you doing now? Like you like. Who is this song about? Right. But he just wanted to make it clear that, like, yo. Right. It was just a shootout. Right. Nigga peeled off, and I noticed the car, and I, then I seen her, and I was like, yo, that's my girl right that's there. That's my girl right there. And it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, like, but I, I love it because it, it is descriptive. It's, it's the same yeah. way that we like, like, them books that take you there. Mm -hmm. You could easily say I saw the girl standing here on the street, and she mm -hmm. was beautiful. Mm-hmm. How many ways can you say beautiful? Right. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. She's fine, sexy. Immaculate. Yeah, but <laughs> if you just like paint the picture to where like I hear what you're saying and I'm like, you said titties on glaze? Okay, mm -hmm. put some glaze on the titties. And what else? Chanel number five? Five. Chanel five. And I can paint that. It, it's. I think that that's like a totally different talent. But I think it takes a lot to say. I seen Shorty. She was fine. What up? <laughs> it takes a lot of confidence to just say that <laughs> and leave it there. Like, right. you know what I mean? You make up what she had on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe she had on a sweatsuit. Mm -hmm. Maybe she had on a snowsuit. Maybe she had on a mini skirt. Yeah. I ain't tell you what time of year it was. I don't know. I ain't tell you what block I was on. <laughs> <laughs> she was just. She looked good. I said, "What's up?" Yeah. You know what I mean? So I I think it might be like the delivery and the confidence in it to say, yeah, I don't even remember what that day was. She I mean, just looked good. Maybe even the person too. Yeah. Like the person that's delivering it. If if you get to know them as as that, like you said, for Styles P, when he say stuff, because for me with Styles, I love, I love his 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 stuff too. Like coming coming up on on the locks and everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, the locks just kill, and at the at that time when I first was coming up on them, it was like, 
yo, Kiss is that dude. Yeah. This and that. And then I say the older I got, I'm listening and still being like, like Kiss still kills it. Mm-hmm. But but um, Styles, he just got something with this. And I feel yeah. like it's what you're saying with that, too. It's just like he just spits and the stuff that he says, it, he still like just comes with some sharp stuff that gets you to be like, damn, that's that's dope. That's <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, it's crazy. It, it's not like I think that um, another good comparison uh, to like a Styles and how it may be simple, mm-hmm. but it's effective. I think. 50 Cent also perfected that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He may rhyme cat and hat, but the stuff in between is so, you know, dope that you're like, cool. You know, I ran up on this Spanish cat. I said, calm your nerves while I put one in your hat. And you mm-hmm. like, I believe he might have did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what the Spanish cat has on. I don't know why he ran up on him. I don't, right. I don't know why. Right. He has successfully rhymed cat and hat. Mm-hmm. And it worked. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's what's so interesting about hip-hop. Um, I think Jay-Z said um, some people just has the voice. And he mm-hmm. what he uh, compared the voice to was Snoop. Mm-hmm. And his exact uh, joint that he ran on was like one, two, three, and to the four. Snoop <laughs> Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at the door. Door and four. You know what I mean? That is like elementary rhyming Mm -hmm. but the way he delivered it and I remember first hearing that it was so dope and I still think it's dope it still is it's still dope like right when you were saying that I'm just it to the to the folk yeah you you hear his voice I hear the voice and just like yeah (laughs) (laughs) what's so crazy about it right my my daughter's counting and she go one two and in my head Three into the four. Every time. <laughs> you know, it's that impactful. What's mm-hmm. that, 92? Right. That long, and here I am sitting in front of a almost two-year-old. I don't do months after they won. When they I won, they won until two. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, 36 months. I ain't got time to right. do math. Like, how old is this child? 23 months year old. What? What? So where's months? where? How old? Yeah. But um, <laughs> even still, it has that impact. And I think that that's... that's uh, it's crazy, and that's the beauty of hip hop, where something as simple as your voice, right, and the cadence, you know what I mean? Because it, it's almost like, you know, he was swimming on that one, two, right. three into the four. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm on the raft. It's like, yeah, right. six uh, flags on the wave uh, pool. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> on the raft. Like, okay, yeah, yeah and, the, and the rhythm. And that's just like, um, and the other thing with that is also is because. We learn numbers, like you said, with your with your two year old or about yeah. to be two. You know, we learn numbers, and we've been counting one to ten, one to however many we could, mm-hmm. way before that song came out. And that song comes out, Snoop does his thing, and now we can't get that out of our mind. And not the hooked on phonics. Yeah, that yeah, you're right. Not the hooked on phonics <laughs> stuff. Right. Not the little stuff that they came out with the the have us read the um say the numbers, sing the numbers. It was Snoop. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's why I think that um hip hop artists, uh, and I specify hip hop, I think hip hop artists are like some of the most intelligent people in the world. Um, it could be my bias because I consider myself a hip hop artist, mm-hmm. but I think it's because Well, first of all, we're using the same words, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, as far as slang goes or, you know, um, just whatever words we're using. Mm -hmm. You know, Snoop isn't the only one we heard count to four. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the way he did it was so impactful that he has taken over all of your memory of one through four. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you... The world has happened in front of all of us, right? So we look at, let's just say me and you go outside and we see a car crash. Mm -hmm. And we both decide to write a rhyme about it. Our rhymes won't sound the same. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how can these two people using the same language, using the same words to describe the same event, Mm -hmm. come up with something completely different? Yeah. That is a high level of thinking to be able to say, 
this is what I'm doing. I mean, I think even as a hip hop listener, you have to be of a certain caliber, a certain intelligence, because you don't know where my metaphors are going to go. Mm-hmm. I could be talking about Cartoon Network and my block and um, Three is Company mm-hmm. and Mickey Mouse and put all of those things in a four bar setup. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to dissect and snatch out each piece. Oh, okay, like Mickey Mouse. Oh, okay, like Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, you know what I mean? And for your brain to operate like that to a melody and still be able to pick stuff up, I think that that's like high level of thinking. Mm-hmm. I feel that's <clears> like <throat> I was just thinking when you when you was using that one, I was thinking about one of the uh, the songs that I that I did and. I used the word um, headhunters mm-hmm. and all that. I used that word four times, and, and each time it either meant something or it circled back around because it was kind of like, um, I can't even remember the third one right now. That's funny. But um, it was um, off of the song called Crush Groove. Okay. And uh, I was like, I should make a show called it head, Headhunters. Yelling Ichabod Crane, I'm a headhunter. So right there, making a show, call it Headhunters. That's nothing deep. Right. But then when I say yelling Ichabod Crane, I'm, I'm a headhunter. If you know, of mm-hmm. course, Headless Horseman. Headless Horseman was going after after Ichabod Crane. You mm-hmm. know, so he's yelling at him, I'm a headhunter. And then, um, girl, I'm fiending for your brain. You know, <laughs> I'm a headhunter. So, of course, I'm looking for you to give me head. And then I say, you should come be on my show and call it, um, you should be on my show, um, Headhunter, something like that. So I kind of like just bring it right back around. Back however, le- however, I ended that part, I brought it right back around to I should make a show. Girl, I'm feeding for your brain. Come be on Headhunters. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> so that setup, <clears throat> like you say, you got to be able to pull each part out. Right. You know, and that's all in what? Four bars. All in four bars that happen. So. So that's exactly what we that's it, it, right on cue for it. It's like <clears throat> um the way I, I think that uh schools, if schools were really trying to like teach the kids, mm-hmm. they would stop ignoring hip hop. Mm-hmm. Especially if you know you're in you're in the urban schools, and I hate the word urban, but mm-hmm. if you are, you gotta you gotta understand that these kids are listening to the hot new artists. Mm-hmm. And when I was teaching what made me so effective was I wouldn't shy away from any of that. Mm-hmm. Who's hot right now? You know, who y'all listening to? And what they're doing, they're like, oh, okay, let's spit out some stuff. And it would blow their minds that I knew what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. And then if I didn't know about them, all right, I'm going to check them out. And then I'll check them out. And I come back, and what looks like is a simple conversation of, what was he talking about in this song? You know, and then they say, and I'm like, well... Did you catch this part? Or what about this part? We're having a dialect, and what I do is I kind of like, let me help you understand how dope your brain is. Mm -hmm. And without them even realizing it, they're explaining complex ideas to me after they told me they couldn't understand a complex machine like a computer. Mm -hmm. And I think that that hip-hop is great for that yeah i think it's it's great for that i i was watching um like I, I i watch battle rap and what i love about it is there's no beat so you can't hide behind the beat you mm-hmm. can't you can't do that mm-hmm. you know it's you and how you put words together and how you deliver them mm-hmm. so that you got to put in the snoop element the one two three into the four. You know, you, you got to do that because mm-hmm. that's your delivery. But then you also got to put together that wordplay um, where I heard uh, if I don't still will, the still will. You know, mm-hmm. and if you still will, it's still, you know, you're like, okay, if he don't still will, the still will mm-hmm. do this to him. And it's like, it sounds like he's saying the same thing, mm-hmm. but he's not. I heard another one that was like, um, don't get sentimental homes. Um, uh, yeah, don't get sentimental homes. When I send something to your mental homes, then 
I may get sent to mental homes. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like he's saying the same thing, but he's broken this down, like, so deep and it's so layered. And it's like, that is, like, high-level thinking. Your your brain has to be, you know, going at a certain frequency to even do something like that. Because you might hear, like, because when you first said that first word, I'm hearing um, sent to mental homes, like, sent to a mental home. Yep. But after you add in the other lyric, I was like, oh, you meant sentimental as being so soft, so, you know. And I'm calling you homes. And calling me homes, exactly. Yeah. So it... <clears throat> that you you think one thing you have to think you know pick up on what they're saying and then as you get more context as the lyrics go on then you gotta mm-hmm. go back real quick and be like oh this is what he meant and then the punchlines start to come into view and you're like oh wow that was dope yeah like, yeah yeah <laughs> it's I, I think that um if we're breaking down Shakespeare mm-hmm we need more classes because I do know that uh, Bun B teaches, KRS-One does, and there's quite a few others that teach these, but these are like college courses. Mm-hmm. And by the time it's time to go to college, the people, you know, a lot of our people from our communities are over education because all of their life, their likes, their wants, their needs has been ignored in the school system for so mm-hmm. long, they can't make it to Bun B's course. Mm-hmm. will make it to KRS-One's course to find out, like, wait a minute. Or get in front of, uh, let's go off a person that's not a rapper, Michael Eric Dyson. Mm-hmm. The way that he likes to break down lyrics, I'm like, this is what he's saying. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's always interesting to see a dude in a suit that's older, he got the glasses, you know he's highly educated, mm-hmm. and he's spitting Jay-Z to you. And right. you were like, what? And, you like, first of all, that's <laughs> intriguing off top. Like, right. wait a minute. You know that? Because I was a young teacher. Mm-hmm. And they looked at me like, wait a minute. You know that? And then when they found out that I rapped on top of that, it was like, <laughs> why are you even here? Right. And it's like, because what took me down this rabbit hole to even learning computers was hip-hop. Mm. I wanted to rap. I had my little makeshift studio set up, and my computer kept crashing. Right. I don't know anything about computers. Why is this happening? Mm-hmm. And then I get tired of paying people. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> For them to come in, and I'm standing there, and I'm looking over their shoulder, and they type, 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 type. Two minutes later, okay, you should be good. Mm-hmm. What did I just pay you for? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, right. What did I give you my money for? And... <laughs> But if I didn't want to be a rapper, I would have never learned computers. Mm-hmm. Like, that, ever. That's funny. When you say, what did I pay you for? Of course, my the entrepreneurial side jumped in, the business side jumped in, and was like, well, you paid me for the eight years of me studying to yep. know how to do this. That's what you paid me for. That's exactly but- <laughs> what it is. No, no, that, that is exactly what you're paying me for my expertise. Right. Like, you're not paying me for the job. I don't get paid by the hour, because if so... Oh yeah, a hundred dollars for me to just be here for five minutes and fix everything yep. sounds crazy. Yeah, but no, you're paying me for. I I took the time to learn this. Exactly. So <laughs> no, no, that that is exactly what's it. Because once I started learning computers, I was like, yo, this is mad complex. Yeah. And it took me like a year and some change, and you know you have to consistently learn it. It's mm-hmm. not like a thing you can get say. Oh, I know how to do it. It's like riding a bike. No, that bike is going to change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I then understood why I paid them. But in the moment, I didn't know enough about computers. I just need to figure this out. Right. (laughs) I just looked at them like, wait, you done? (laughs) Right, because it do make you feel like like, if you figure that out so quick, I need to look this up because I don't need to be, you know. But I think that's probably your makeup, too, because... You got the makeup of okay. If it takes, if it's that short, then I need to go figure this out. Right. I'm the same type of type of way where I'm like, I need to figure this out, type thing. But a lot of people out there don't be, they don't feel like they have the time or just don't even care to give the time to yeah. figure it out. So it's just be like, all right, whatever. I mean, and then you got to explain to them the whole thing about my years of me putting into this expertise. Right. They're not going to change anything on it. They'd be like, oh, okay, cool, whatever, and still pay you and then move on and never try to figure it out themselves anyway. You know, so 
But then I, I just I just think when when you said it, of course, like I said, it just popped in my head. Like, whoa, wait a minute. Like you're paying me for this. For the like, expertise. Of, of course. Yeah. Of course, having the expertise, that's what I think. But um, I definitely get what you're saying about that. That you see all that and you like, all right, I gotta figure this out. And that took you only because of hip hop. That's how you got into, you know, just feeling like I need to learn computers and all that. That's what brought me into teaching. Mm-hmm. That everything that I do in my life right now, everything, I can draw back to hip hop, or I can paint. I can use that as a pavement towards mm-hmm. building for hip hop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, my mother used to make me pick up the dictionary. If I got in trouble, it was like, okay, 10 words. You give me the dictionary definition. You give me your def- definition of your own words, and you use it in a sentence. Mm-hmm. And I'm like second, third grade, and it was like, I don't even use words like discombobulated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What is that? Right, right, right. So... It was because she was making me that I did that. When I get to school, <clears throat> they was only giving me the bare minimum, so I would only do the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. But when I listen to Wu Tang, mm-hmm. it's like, wait, what? What is that word? Right. What's that? Right. And I run and go pick up a dictionary. Nobody's mm-hmm. making me do that. Mm-hmm. I could just turn this off and ignore everything that he said. Yep. But me being into hip hop was like, yo, it sound dope. But what is that? But what is that? Same exact Maybe thing. Maybe crack for me. open the books. Same exact thing for me where I I would do that so I used to do that so many times with Jay Z, you know. He'd just say something like and trying to get away from me so vehemently. And I'm like, what the hell is vehemently? Like I I had first had to try to figure out what he was saying. Right. But then <clears> once <throat> I figured it out, I'm like, I gotta look this up. Right. It's been so many words that I learned through people like Jay mm-hmm. and all that. Just by them saying it. And it and it don't even be in no no corny way or or that that cliche you know I, I, I won't I don't want to say corny fully like but that's how, how I feel sometimes being the corny way but then I just say like that cliche way of how a a very educated rapper um hip hopper would would rap just use way too they, many yeah just yeah. way too many words and you just like Yo, you just said I'm going to the fridge. Like, how did you just give a whole dissertation? Yeah, man, it took you ten minutes words. to get to the to the fridge. <laughs> you know, so yeah. But, but like, when you just sprinkle it in like that, it made me just be like, Yo, I gotta look this up. Oh, I learned something new. Oh, I learned something new. And me and my boys, we would use those words because me and my me and my um boy Franklin, you know, we are like like. Everything Jay, we we just had everything just bumping through Jay, and then we even got to a point where we um, would talk to each other, mm-hmm. and or we'd be in a certain situation, seeing that we was up there at Howard together, we'd be in certain situations where something would happen, and we would just say a line from Jay Z that that actually went with the situation. Situation, yeah. We started <clears throat> talking basically in Jay Z codes and lyrics. Yep. <laughs> You know, so that's 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 funny right there that you learn so much through hip hop willingly. Yeah, and it, it I think that that's where like our system falls apart mm-hmm. because um, I mean now since we grew up on hip hop, it's more accepted. Mm-hmm. But I remember, you know, being a kid, there was still a lot of. Well, hippity hop bull. I don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. That's not music, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember that being a time. And then I'm like, this was like '90s for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was born in the '80s, but '90s is when, you know, I got into my music and all of my schooling and everything. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I can only imagine what the late '70s and '80s looked like mm-hmm. when people were like, no. That's not even anything. Like we're not even talking about that. That's a fad. Mm-hmm. It's gonna. It, people mm-hmm. didn't even believe it was gonna exist long. Right. But it, it's like I think now that people are doing a disservice by ignoring those things. Because imagine if your English teacher would have spit a Jay Z line. Right. You know what I mean? And he got lots of lines that he's not cursing in. Mm-hmm. So if they'd have spit a line and you would have been like, "What you know about that?" Mm-hmm. And then they go, "Well, you know, do y'all know what this means?" Right. You're intrigued, mm-hmm. you know, versus them trying to stuff, okay, how old is Shakespeare? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, when you're a kid, you know, I know people that like Shakespeare now. 
that hated it in school. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I never really got into it. Um, and a lot of people tell me it's because you don't understand the language. Mm-hmm. And that could very well be it. But I'm like, I wasn't interested in that. And how they could have uh, brought me into that is by attacking, this is what you like? Let's drill this. And then I'm going to draw a parallel. Mm-hmm. The same way I was like with the computers. Everybody was telling me, my mother included, because she she didn't know anything about computers, but she heard computers was the future, and she said, you got to learn computers. Same thing with my parents. And I was like, learn what about computers? Learn computers. Like, it was just, that was just it, computers. Mm-hmm. You know, like, there was a class called computers, you know what I mean? Take yeah. the computer class. Um, and I went, and I tried to learn computers. I touched on a few different computer classes, and I was like, oh, boring, I'm done. Mm-hmm. But when I had my laptop and my little makeshift studio and everything, and it kept crashing, I now have an experience to draw from. Mm-hmm. Oh, so when it said that it was out of space, basically this was what was happening. Mm-hmm. When it talked about RAM, I didn't know what it was trying to RAM into. You know right. what I mean? Like, what is this? <laughs> I didn't I didn't hit this against anything. <laughs> right. How was the, the RAM low? Is that because mm-hmm. I'm not pushing? Like, what is, what's that? Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> so then I started being able to draw those connections, and it all came from a place of love in hip hop, mm-hmm. love for hip hop, you know. And I think that if you broke down, you know, the lyrics, or if you, you, you have like, you want to introduce new words, you can use lyrics. You can use, you know, um, these different ideas to draw up a lesson plan. And besides, they say, like, every day going, um, like, anybody that study, study words, study um, lyrics and all that, they all, marketers know that to make something stick, if it rhymes, you know, you're going to remember <clears throat> it more mm-hmm. than if I just say it. And if it rhymes, it sounds more true than if I just state a fact. True. You know, so pick out some nice hip-hop lyric lines that has that word that you want to teach kids, they're going to remember it. One, because you did just use hip-hop. And then two, if it's a dope line, they're going to remember that line. Yep. Period. (laughs) So You you ain't lying about that. And then, like you said, same thing with me. My parents sent me me to it. They sent me to a um, computer computer camp Mm -hmm. all over the summer. And we had to, like, put together the computers and all that. Had to put the SCSI here and there, you know, um, when we opened up and looked at the motherboard. And that was fun for me back then. And I didn't really pursue it like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But back to what you say about hip-hop, with me making music, when it was time for me to do some things, like you were saying about the RAM, I learned RAM, especially when I started to record a lot of tracks. Mm-hmm. And then that joint kept on saying memory low. And I'm like, memory low? And I'm going into everything. And I'm like, my hard drive said got about 100 right. gigabytes. Like, what you <coughs> mean memory low? low? Yeah. You know, so that's when I learned that, okay, storage and memory are two different things. Yep. Of course, we take memory as my phone is low on memory, which we really meant storage. Yep. And all right. so then I started learning that stuff and had to figure out, okay, I need to get me some more RAM for this computer. I opened that bad boy up. It did not look like what the computers looked like when I was young. Yep. But at least I was like, that's the motherboard. This is the memory stick, the RAM stick. This goes right here where the RAM is, and Mm -hmm. boom. So it helps. It helps out, you know, just going through it. And then, of course, through hip-hop, I had to go into my computer. (laughs) So hip-hop saves lives. It teaches people. It, you know, all of these things. And, And still somehow it seems like, the world hasn't caught up. Mm-mm. I mean, the the hip hoppers, we get it mm-hmm. because we were in it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> you. I, I just watched uh, Crook's Corner with Eminem mm-hmm. on there, and they were like on some like real nerd shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But they were talking about hip hop, right? And it's like. I can say that it was nerd stuff because I can now tell when I'm getting into, like, some nerdy stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When I'm talking about superheroes or I'm talking about 
different philosophies and theories or when I'm going into the rhyme pattern because the person that's not listening to the music, they just hear it, they don't really even notice the rhyme pattern switching. Mm -hmm. They don't even notice how deep, you know what I mean, the rhyme Mm -hmm. scheme goes. It's just, I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah, I can rock with this. Yeah. And they don't notice the switching of it. And once you start getting into the mechanics and how deep and layered this stuff goes, you're going to stumble onto into these nerd conversations yeah. of the words that's being used. Even the most hardest gangster rappers talking about Looney Tunes. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. And their rhyme schemes. And then you got, like, I don't see how you can be an engineer and not nerd out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You, you you have to, like, or you, you're doing somebody a disservice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that... Uh, I know I know for one thing, when we, when we were talking about um, just because we get it, I, I was thinking about um, I might, I don't, I don't know if I did it or not, but mm-hmm. I might have to after this now do a within the sound wave for dripping and mm-hmm. all that because with that song dripping I I have the I rap what I rap on there but at the same time I'm actually rapping and it sounds scary and all this other ominous stuff so a lot of things I pull from that kind of like from Curry and everything mm-hmm. but the whole um, thought process of that song was actually coming from the Grand Canyon and all that like everything was about the Grand Canyon and I actually had to look up what the Grand Canyon was made out of. It's it made out of, like, three different, like, rock elements and all that. Mm-hmm. I only know two right now off the top of my head, mainly because I put those two in the song. So I put it in the song so I can learn it. Right. And now I can't re- can't forget it. And that's why I can't remember the third one, because I don't think that wasn't I put in the third. That wasn't in the song. But, because, like, when I say, um, I'm, like, at the end of the one of the verses, I say something about um, just how the water basically, basically how the water just kept on dripping down onto the into the it wasn't a canyon at the time, but right there in that spot, and it just kept on eating away at eating the rocks. Away at it. Oh man! And then and over <clears throat> time, over thousands of years, just water alone basically carved out this whole this big, big Grand Canyon. So hmm. through that, I took that whole thought process of if I just chew away with this music, over time it's going to eat away, and now people are going to jump onto it. And throughout the whole song, I, I said stuff about I'm gonna keep on dripping away until it chew through your limestone. That's one rock from it, and all that. And then I say I'm gonna keep coming um, to the met- metamorphic become Grand Canyon. That was in the last um, verse. So mm-hmm. basically, at that point, I basically. If you know anything about the Grand Canyon, you know metamor- the metamorphic rocks that are in the Grand Canyon became the Grand Canyon, you know? Wow. So after learning all that, I put it in the song, and I was like, I'm not just going to bring it just to say it and be like, oh, look, Grand Canyon. No, I wanted it to come with a, a, a grimy beat, something when the hook comes in, drip, 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 steady dripping on them, you know? Something that you can just be bouncing with, especially at the time drip is the, you know, the slang. Right. You know, so using that slang to teach something without, if you decide to listen and decide to research, you didn't even know, like, oh, this is what he's talking about. But it's actually something teachable in there. And just like I said, when you think about the hook now, that water just dripping away on, on the Grand Canyon. Drip, 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 steady dripping on them, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, that's some real nerdy shit. But I had no right. idea. But that's, that's, it, that, that's the dope part about it. Because I heard the song, and I thought the song was dope. And I gathered a message, but I didn't know to that level. That grand so now I got to re-listen to it, and you know what I mean? Like, wow, that's that's. I knew nothing about the Grand Canyon. <laughs> I knew, you know, nothing about those rocks. I Like I said, I heard the song, mm-hmm. but I didn't know that, you know, it was that deep of a yeah, level. And right, it's like, exactly. and hearing that, and hearing the explanation, it's like, Throw away your textbooks, man. Like this, right. you know what I mean? It's, it's <laughs> if I was sitting in a classroom and they were trying to teach me about the Grand, and they probably did teach me about the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. and I probably zoned out. 
while I was thinking about right, cause I don't some remember. other lyrics. You know what I mean? Like thinking about some lyrics and thinking about what I'm doing when I get out of school mm. or things of that nature. It's put the medicine in the candy. Yep. No, nah, I don't want to take that. But this tastes good, so I'll take that. Mm. Oh, it's medicine in it? Great. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that just offered an explanation, clearly that's a perfect example of a song that... Layers. That has the layers. That's... Mm deep real real deep and you're going to learn something from it um when it that made me think of something it's, it's all for music i looked at uh daniel tosh stand up mm-hmm. from tosh.0 mm-hmm. he i think he's funny because he's random mm-hmm. he was on stage he was talking and he stopped and he was like kangaroos can't jump backwards <laughs> not funny but you learned something <laughs> and the first thing i thought was hell no google time you right, know what i mean right. And they can't. I don't believe no damn comedian. Yeah, but I was like, <laughs> damn, he right. And he was like, <laughs> you know, five years later, you're in Australia, and a kangaroo was about to attack your friend, and you'll instinctively yell out, get behind him. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> and you won't even know why. And I was like, that stuck out to me, and it's probably because I'm an artist, and I do that, that him explaining that, was so hilarious to me, where I know I showed it to a few people that was like, mm, I don't think he's funny. And I was like, that's fine for you not to, but I was like, I make music. I write lyrics that are like that, mm-hmm. where I'm telling you something, and you may not even realize you picked it up mm-hmm. until you're in a situation, and you're telling the man being attacked by a kangaroo to get behind him. Get behind him. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it's really interesting in how all of that ties in and how your brain works in putting that together. It's like, yo, we we are genius. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It like, takes a lot. It, it takes, it, a, it takes lot. a whole lot. Because you know you be searching for words, and a, and a lot of hip-hop artists just go, go into the dictionary and learn words just so they can use it, Yeah, you know, in a song and all that. And the dopest thing to me is when you use things... And like I said, it don't sound corny. It sounds like, yo, this is dope. And like the all right, give you give you an example about the corniness that I be talking about. Somebody somebody probably don't think it's corny. I don't care. I think it's corny. Right, okay. But when I hear like the over and over, I feel like when it first happened, it was cool. But now it's just corny when you say the um, apologies for the ologies or this such and such. Michael Ollies because I followed the Ollies. For Ollie, yeah, you're like, does this even say anything? Right, my terminology. You can't follow these because yeah. of the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I totally agree because it, it's overdone. Yeah. Um, and that's not the medicine in the candy. Mm-mm. That is, take this robot. Take this, right. <laughs> and I hate Robitussin, by the way. <laughs> like, you can keep that, like, you know what right. I mean? I, yeah, I, I <clears throat> don't like that. But when it's delivered the right way, right? and I guess that's subjective, but for me, when it's delivered the right way you and you get something from it, it'd be like, oh, man, this is, this is I just learned something. Matter of fact, it was, I can't think of the first line in it, but uh-huh. I think it comes from Jay-Z and when he was on... Um, Pushers, Pushers song when they had that song together that just came out like a couple um, years ago. I um, forgot, the, 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 something anonymous. Yeah, drug yeah, dealer anonymous. Drug dealer anonymous. Yeah. When my man Jay said, I can't remember the first part he said about about something about God, this and that, and then he said, I'm a course of miracles in this shit, and all that. Just so happened a week before I heard that song, my father brings me this book, and it's called A Course in Miracles. And on the first page in it is a tagline or a quote that said exactly what Jay-Z said when he set up the line to say, I'm a course of miracles in this shit. And so when I heard that, I'm like, Jay, Jay reading. Look yeah, at this. Yeah, that's crazy. Look at this. That's so, crazy. I only caught that line just because of what I found out a week ago. Yeah, hey, right before. Yeah, that's crazy. But it's just so smooth. He puts it in there or people like hip hoppers like that put it in there so smoothly like you either catch it, you either up on it, you catch it, or you just don't. And I, like I said, the only reason I caught it a week ago, I got the book Course of Miracles. Yeah, I, I didn't like, have. Oh, I'm gonna have to go listen to that song again too. Yeah, I didn't have that. Um, that. That's probably one of the reasons why I love that that song. One, that song period is just dope. Yeah. You know, but when I heard that, it just caught me by surprise, and I'm just like, look at this. 
Like, that, uh, <laughs> that, um, as <clears throat> soon as you said Jay-Z, what popped in my head was, um, the Meek song, Free. Mm, mm. When he went, like, crazy, like, and then, you know, um, Sign I Fail, hell no. And I'm like, that joint was dope. What? Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's so like, yo, what did you just say? <laughs> you know, um, and, and uh, another line that popped up, it wasn't Jay, it was uh, Crooked Eye. Mm. He, um was speaking on, like, uh, uh, Abe Lincoln's assassination. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, the double entendre where you can hear the surface of it, mm -hmm. but you got to, like, dig deeper the head. And he was like, um, Abraham, I go ham. Mm -hmm. And I was like, did you say Abraham? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's nuts, the amount of things that you can... So if you listen to... I can't even what song it was, but if you listen to that song, he's talking about the assassination. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... I remember they went over this in school, but I don't remember much about the assassination because she was born. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, but if Crooked Eye came in there and was telling me about this, I'd have been like, hey, bro, I go ham? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Right, because you, know, yeah. you know how we love to take things and run with it. Yep. Especially in school, we would take things and just run with it. So every day... After that, if we would have heard it from Crooked Eye, we'd be like, and, she, and the teacher would be like, oh, we're about to learn about Abraham Lincoln. That's my man, Abraham go ham right there. Yeah, and you know? it would have been constant. It's constantly, and everybody would have jumped in. One mm -hmm. person would have said it. Everybody laughed, fall out laughing. Right. And then I would have remembered that Tony in third period said, Abraham go ham, mm -hmm. and now I can't forget about Abraham Lincoln mm -hmm. because of that. And that's just the way that... Um, how when, Wilkes Booth caught him sleeping in the booth, put him to sleep. Like, come on. Yeah, all, all of that stuff. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I think about um, the Scruff McGruff commercials. Ah, uh, yeah. Scruff McGruff. Chicago, Illinois, 60652. <laughs> That's from the 90s. Yeah. Why do I remember that? Mm -hmm. It is the song. Mm -hmm. It is the melody. You know, um... Even if you look at kids when they teach the ABCs, it's a song. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, as you get older, you don't want to hear like some corny rap and Abraham Lincoln was too good. You know, yeah, you don't want to hear that because you because <laughs> you grow up just yeah, like yeah. you do with as a kid. You grow up. You you look at these these certain cartoons because, like we talked about already, X Men is still right. still that cartoon. But certain cartoons you grew up on, you don't want to watch it anymore. Right. You grew up. You got more mature. And so. It's, yeah. So you need you need the content to mature. So yes. instead of me hearing somebody try to rap, you know, with directly, Abraham Lincoln, he was the president. <laughs> they killed him. That's so relevant. Like instead of hearing something like corny like that, I want to hear Crooked Eye. Hey, bro, I go ham. Like, oh, okay. Right. I see what you did there. Right. And it 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 sticks. Mm -hmm. It sticks the same way that stupid ass Scruff McGruff commercial is in my brain. The same way that um, Next Day Floors mm. commercial, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, unless I need a new floor, what good is that Next Day Floors commercial right. going to do? That's not going to help me in school. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these, these hip-hop artists today, they are given so much. And I think that we're doing a disservice by not putting the spotlight on it. You know, yeah. got to shed a light on it. Like, yeah. yo, this is deep. Instead of drilling in the Grand Canyon into my head, I don't want to hear that. Right. They could play your song. Right, just play the song. And then, because to me, because I'm, I'm thinking about like what you're saying about if we just give these things, even that song, I could see it in my mind where I'd just be like, if I was a teacher, I would just play that song for the kids. Maybe even a couple days in a row, just play the song. Yep. As they coming in, you play the song, and then they getting acclimated to it. And then by that Friday or that next week on Monday, play the song. And then we say, let's go into these lyrics. And then you break down the Grand Canyon because they already getting acclimated to the song. They already liking the song. They already liking the fact that you're playing this song when they come into the, come mm -hmm. into the classroom. And now, boom, you hit them with the course, the class schedule. And then you show like, OK, this is actually talking about Grand Canyon. I boom. actually did that with a, um, I had a class. It was pretty much, they, they put me in a filler class um, because a lot of, like, my students that took my computer class was, like, I learned so much from him, from him mm -hmm. like, life stuff. So uh, I got put in, like, a filler class place where he was, like, 
this isn't a computer class. Um, this is yours. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of threw me in there. And kids had to sign up for it. So, they, you know, nobody was, like, made to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, first, it started as, like, an after-school program. And what I did, uh, I can't remember um, what the Joyner Lucas song is. When he tells the story, uh, it's from a, a white, it's a white boy's uh, perspective. And he's, like, a skateboarder. He becomes friends with this guy. And then the guy shoots him, shoots him up. Mm-hmm. Then... He brings it all the way back. Mm-hmm. He tells a story from the shooter's perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so mad I can't remember the name of it. But um, I heard the song first. And I was like, yo, this is like the dopest song I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. Then when I was, uh, you know, I went to listen to it on YouTube one day because I had his mixtape. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to listen to it on YouTube and I saw that it was a video. And a video was shot, like, first person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when it was from, like, the the, the white kids thing, you could see, like, his arms and everything, mm-hmm. but you couldn't see him. And Joyner Lucas was playing the guy, mm-hmm. uh, the, the black guy that, you know, he becomes friends with. It, it's not necessarily a black guy. Joyner Lucas is black. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it shows him. And then it rewinds, and now you're looking at it from, like, Joyner Lucas' perspective, Mm -hmm. and you can see, like, the white guy. Like, the whole day is played out twice Mm -hmm. from two different perspectives. Um, And that happens. And you know how they show the recommended video? Mm -hmm. The recommended video was the guy that it actually happened to. Oh, wow. It's It's a true story. True story. You know what I mean? Where this guy, he gets shot, like, two, three times with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. Where he, like, mangled his arm and his leg and then like I think like grazed his head or something like that Mm -hmm. and he's telling the story and he's like when I first heard the song I thought Joyner Lucas was there like you know Mm -hmm. what I mean like (laughs) how could he possibly know this right but Joyner Lucas said he heard the story and he just created it's a perspective piece he was like this is what I heard about the story and it came from the victim's mouth and then he turned around and said what might have happened with the shooter why did the shooter do this? Mm-hmm. And then he makes up the story of the shooter. But the guy that it actually happened to was like, no, that was the case with the shooter. Mm. You know what I mean? And it, it's, it was crazy. So I came up with this idea and ordered how I started the program was when the kids came in, I was playing a song and I'm, I'm bopping as they coming in, giving them files, they coming in, whatever, just grab a seat anywhere, so yeah. forth and so on. And then the, the kids that were there earlier, early enough, they heard the whole song. The kids that were just walking in, strolling in kind of late, caught pieces of it. And then I stopped. I stopped it when it went off and was like, let's discuss it. Mm-hmm. We started talking and the kids that were late to the class were like, oh, well, I only know, they only knew about the shooter's perspective. Mm-hmm. They didn't know about the victim's perspective. And for one, it made them want to get to class on time mm-hmm. because this is a deep, deep conversation that they would be interested in. And it sounds like something that happens in their neighborhood, but they didn't have the whole story. Mm-hmm. So they were handicapping their argument. Mm-hmm. But for the ones that were there on time, heard the whole song. And after we discussed this for like two days of just discussing this, because of course the second day when I played it again, my class was full when it started. Mm-hmm. You know, even the ones that strolled in 10 minutes late were there one time, you know what I mean, to hear it. And then we discussed it again, and then I went on to something else. Third day, I played the video. And it was like, oh, wow, I never told them the name of the song. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wow, this is crazy, so forth and so on. Wow, and it was all perspective, mm-hmm. how they felt. I understand it's messed up what happened to the victim, but I understand what happened to the shooter too mm-hmm. he was also a victim and these are kids that are they reading in math school which is like second third grade level mm-hmm. and these are juniors and seniors mm-hmm. just having this highly intellectual conversation based off of a rap story mm-hmm. then I had like some some of the students were pulling up statistics and how often this happens I'm not telling them to do this mm-hmm. but they know that this is going to be part of the argument in the first 15, 20 minutes of the class. Yeah. So they're coming in there armed and ready. Right. And then I was like, do anybody believe this can happen? And then there's the argument, yeah, maybe, da 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 And then I play the 15-minute 
interview of the guy talking the about guy. how he felt about the song, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. I'm going to have to give you the name of that joint, and maybe you can... I feel like you <clears> sent <throat> me that joint a while ago. Probably. I'm, I feel I'm, like you sent me that video, because I remember the video. I don't yeah. remember the name of the song and all that, but I remember them him driving them somewhere and all that. Yeah, that joint yeah. is like... It yeah. is, is crazy, you know what I mean? Like that's crazy. So, <clears throat> so like you said, you did that with the, with the students. Yep. And they actually was engaged with it, and then, you know people would probably be like, "Oh, but it's so violent and everything." But they, like the point that you're missing it is the things of there's a perspective to both sides with it. Yep. And we can break down how these situations can play out, even if you're thinking you're getting over on somebody. Or, you know, just, just looking at how the setup happened and mm -hmm. what to look out for. This and, like, all this stuff you can imbue into that situation and teach children, teach kids a lot of stuff through it. And that's what ended up happening. Since I started the class on that, I was able to bring up topics that would not have worked on the first day of school. Yeah. I was able to introduce, like, you know what I mean, let's look into this court document of, you know, this specific case and they were quick to jump on it because mm -hmm. I started with something that was relatable to them. Yeah. If I just jump right out there and like, you know, check out the court, they'd be like, after the system because my brother locked up. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or and then it shuts down. Mm -hmm. That's why these highly intelligent kids are have reading levels of second and third grade. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Their research papers aren't coming out well, but they're coming in here and they having like I'm talking about criminal defense lawyer, you know, vernacular. And right. if you look at the statistics in the neighborhood that they was from, this, 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 and, you know, it's yeah. crazy. You know what I mean? And if music does that, mm. we're doing a huge injustice to our students and our youth by ignoring that. Mm -hmm. That's why I take this rap shit so serious mm -hmm. that's why it's so important for me to have a message mm -hmm. sometimes I'm rapping about rapping I'm like look I'm nice and I'm gonna tell you how nice I am right but then sometimes <clears throat> you'll get those songs where it's like let's dig deeper okay here's a layer let's go deeper mm -hmm. let's go deeper let's go deep it's like the, the tip of the iceberg right iceberg is only five inches but it's like 30 feet down the bottom and if mm -hmm. you don't think so you dive down there and touch the bottom. Let's see right. if you make it up here before you run out of air and die. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that we need more thought-provoking music to be highlighted in the system. And in I think that we come up with a better society that way. I feel you. I mean, I, I feel like we just actually broke down a lot of stuff to show mm -hmm. why it would be great. From stuff that we just did to the things of, of the the lyrics and what they could be entailing with the different surfaces to um, just the way you got to be so witty as we would say but the 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 how much brain capacity that you got to use the mind the 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 depths of study that you have to do to come up with certain ways to use these words right. and the creativity behind it too to just like you said the a bra go ham and all that like yeah to the creativity that got to go into bringing this stuff and if you want to bring it right it, the creativity that has to come to bring it correctly where people think it's dope and all that and still be relatable at the same time right that is a whole lot for an artist to do but it can yield so much and like you said if we go forth with that and have people actually use that to teach it will yield something else deeper and i feel like this is probably one of the reasons why hip-hop has has just just really rooted itself as like the staple amongst the world really and if we just continue moving with that that would definitely take it somewhere else Thanks that's all we got see y'all next time bong Hey podcast, I appreciate your ears. If you found any value in this begotten experience, pass it forward, share it with a friend. And if not, thanks for stopping by. Until next time. <laughs>